pounds, ready? On this three by five. Now, if I have an average of a 150 pound tenant in that room, I mean, I can, that fire escape will take 10 tenants on that three by five. Can we get 10 tenants in that three by five? So it's, it's overbuilt. Let's get the firemen on there. Firemen usually are coming in at 200 pounds plus 75 to 100 pounds of gear. They weigh 300 pounds. So can I get a 300 pound fireman? Can I get five of them with all their gear on in a three by five? So these things are built and overbuilt. So if this thing had a tag on it, they're safe where they are. To be evacuated, I don't know what the scenario is here. They're either fighting the fire or they're trying to get out of it. But this is what they need. This is their last means of egress. So there's a live load test. Here's some more live load testing. This happens quite a bit, doesn't it? How about people taking shots on fire escapes, you know? How about college students in and around your area, basically constantly going out there, putting potted plants, having a smoke outside? These are all live load tests. This is down, um, I think it's in Foxborough. Anybody recognize this? This is uh, down by the border of New, uh, Rhode Island and, and Mass. I forgot the exact city, but it's uh, basically, <coughs> let me tell you the scenario here. This is a live load test that uh, failed. Uh, a guy had some row houses, turned into five condos. He, he and his son put the fire, uh, took the fire escapes off and put them back on. Had some extra bolts, didn't really need them. And he put the fire escapes back on. See that fire escape there? The fire escape here that fell, and the fire escape that I'm taking the photograph from that used to be there that fell down to the ground. He basically did the roof himself, him and his sons, and then he sold the condo. Now, when he sold the condos, there was people buying and selling, obviously. So one day they had a real estate agent <coughs> plus a buyer, a real estate agent plus a seller, plus one of the trustees, and they were all on the top of the fire escape talking about the roof and talking about this. Guess what happened? All of them fell to the ground here, and they were all underneath this mangled. When we got there, guess what else was ready to fall? The other two fire escapes. But do you think anybody died under this uh, mangled mess? And the first phone call you make when you're underneath that mangled mess, and you have your cell phone next to you? 911 or your lawyer? Who do you call first? Right? So, here's another case in Iowa. We, we're expert witnesses in a lot of cases where they bring us in to speak on, on cases to find out what happened. So it's like CSI fire escapes, you know? This is three students. They were up there watching the 4th of July uh, fireworks. And uh, it just so happened that the guys, uh, this guy owns a lot of property and he rents to a lot of students, but they had to work on this side of the building and do some uh, window work and some siding work. So they took the whole fire escape down and instead of putting it back through with a, with a plate, those, these are actually plated and sandwiched. They put it back and instead of, uh, in their rush, instead of putting in a plate back in right there, they lag bolted through a half inch hole, they lag bolted it with a two inch lag bolt into a half inch hole. So when the students were up there watching the fireworks, three of them fell here and then hit the ground. Yep, that's the fire escape on the ground the day of the incident, blood on the ground. And then they threw all the uh, pieces into a open field like eight blocks away. 